Well, as you said, there's an elections uh, cycle coming up in, uh, in November. I don't manage the uh, portfolios for the funds, but as you can read from your Bloomberg terminals, there's an awful lot of information coming out about the elections. There's uh, some information coming out uh, also about uh, the subprime and foreclosure situation in the U.S. that's keeping some, uh, some managers up at night, and I think that people are looking for clarity in those situations. But the markets overall have been uh, behaving quite well. Uh, spreads seem to be tightening in the credit markets. Uh, the companies seem to be doing well, even though the economy is uh, stumbling a bit. And if you look at things in the S&P, for example, you look at uh, the S&P total earnings, I believe about 30% of their businesses come from overseas. So I think there's a, uh, in our region, we're seeing uh, strong company growth. Uh, the economies out here are performing well. Uh, investor appetite here is still fairly strong, as, as witnessed by the tightening in the credit spreads in Asia. And I think uh, mm -hmm. as so far that looks like looks to continue. Hey, what about cash flow into this region, Brian? We, you know, we're talking about quantitative easing, a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. Is it coming here to this part of the region? Are, are hedge funds reaping some of that cash? That's the big question that's going on here. Uh, I think that, you know, there's so many different surveys out there and there are so many different uh, metrics that uh, measure the uh, inflows to cash out here. What we are seeing is we've seen some uh, funds in the region close down. We've seen some uh, larger funds uh, move away out of the region and back to their home, uh, home base. But on the same side, we've also seen some proprietary desks where they have, uh, because of the Volcker rule, they have gone out and set up their own funds and seem to be attracting money. So I think overall, from what we can gather from the best sources, uh, there is a fair amount of money still coming into the region. I believe it was about $1.6 billion uh, came into this mm -hmm. region. So I think there's still a appetite for Asian funds, and I still think there's appetite for Asian managers, uh, and I think we are seeing our fair share come into the, uh, into the region. But it's been a tough year for hedge funds, don't you think? I mean, up until May when it looked like a lot of funds were bleeding at that point, a lot of them would be shut down. What about the middle guy? Aren't they being pushed out of the hedge fund industry here in the Asia pack, those 250 to maybe half a million hedgies? Well, that's the question. I mean, the, the, you know, the big getting bigger and the, the, the small starting up and then the middle getting squeezed. Uh, that seems to be, I think, what's going on. But Again, you know, there's not a real consistent metric out there to measure uh, what's been happening. We have seen, for example, on your top news page today, they were mentioning about some closures of funds in, in the region, uh, in that middle ground. Um, but again, you know, a $250 million fund that trades an equity long short book is a little different than a $250 million fund that trades credit that's different than trades volatility. So I think the absolute numbers sometimes can be a bit deceiving, but I think you're right. I think what's happening is that uh, the investor base is looking for a strong operational infrastructure in the larger funds, and I think some of the mm -hmm. seeders are looking for some of the new talent from the prop desks in the very small funds. So okay. um, that would right. make sense that the middle Bri gets squeezed. Brian? I'm running out of time. I got to talk to you about, uh, the, I guess, the, the big word these days in the markets is currency war and currency battles. Why are currencies keeping you up at night these days? <laughs> um, anytime you use the term war, it keeps people up at night. So I think that's but nobody wins in a war. Um, I think what's happening in the currencies is that the, the U.S. is devaluing and everyone else seems to be devaluing at the same time. But, you know, the yen is still strong. The RMB is still strong. Uh, the Asian currencies, the Australian dollar still remains strong. So the Asian currencies seem to be the beneficiary.